So yeah, that Deadpool trailer was pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been like a long time since I've actually seen a positive comment section for a Marvel movie trailer, and it's nice to see that. And I see a lot of people saying that the only Marvel movie they're excited for is Deadpool and Wolverine. But obviously, yeah, I'm excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, but. I was also really, really, really looking forward to Madam Web. As soon as that first trailer dropped, I I had to click on it. I saw the thumbnail for it got recommended to me when it when on the day it dropped, it got recommended to me. I immediately had to click it. The trailer was just wonderful cringe. It was one of the cringiest movie trailers I have ever seen in my entire life. And I thought to myself, this. I would pay money to see. <laughs> I love cringe. I I can't stress enough how much I love cringe. This cringe just made me want to. <laughs> I, I, I was in full support of this fucking cringe. <laughs> it was about to just blaze upon me. Uh, so I would say for me, for a lot of people, they're going to say, oh, Deadpool is like the only Marvel movie they're excited for this year. For me, it was Deadpool and Madam Web. So yeah, I saw Madam Web. <sighs> you see, when I said I was super excited for this movie, I feel like I was like understating things a little bit because I was so unbelievably excited. This movie came out Wednesday. Uh, um, February 14th, I was there first showing opening day, first showing I was there. I was like, I'm going to order the largest, um, bucket of popcorn with a large drink. And I did that. I have video proof of me doing that. And I was so excited and believe me when I tell you this movie delivered, delivered on the fucking cringe. Um, <clears throat> so this movie was directed by S.J. Clarkson, who um, I believe this is her first feature-length film. Um, she's usually known for directing TV. And this movie was written by... Let me check. Let me check. Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless. If those names sound familiar to you, it's because those those two are the guys that wrote Morbius. So what could go wrong? Uh, I, I I don't know like when to start with what to start with. This movie was so bad. I I actually started taking notes on my phone. Like I I've never done that in my entire life. It was so bad. I I, I had to like start. <laughs> Taking notes. You see, my notes got so long. And there's like so much to talk about. I, I don't know where to start with. This is like, it's like whenever someone asks me, what is like the worst thing about the 2016 Suicide Squad movie? I'm like, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start with this. First off, I had a pretty funny experience. So, um... When the movie started, I was at I was at uh, an, an, an um, AMC theater. So you know how the AMC has that intro of Nicole Kidman. I've never seen this, but there was this guy that started clapping when the movie started. <laughs> that you you would normally see like, like people clapping after a movie ended, or like when something epic happens, or like the you know the big you know final showdown or something, right? That, that's perfectly understandable to see, you know see audiences clapping. I had never um, seen an audience clap at the start of a movie. I'll ask a movie that's like Madam Web, <laughs> and I knew, and I knew that man that clapped when the movie started was here for the same reason I was. <laughs> this man probably knew the movie was going to be shit. You know, I'm just going to go through the notes for all this. I'm just going to I'm just going to start off with the opening scene. Um so the opening scene starts off with Madam Webb's mom in the Amazon forest <laughs> with the bad guy um 
the bad guy's name is Ezekiel Sims. And uh, um, already right at the bat, the editing is absolutely horrendous. There's this hilarious edit of um, Madame Webb's mom. She's, like, pregnant. And, like, he's like, oh, yeah, these spiders, they can cure hundreds of diseases. And it all of a sudden cuts to her screaming in pain. <laughs> From, from the pregnancy and it was like it was like all of a sudden she's just saying her night line normally and then like the next cut is just her like screaming <laughs> it was hilarious um and then ezekiel sims like i said he's the bad guy he starts like like killing all of like the other researchers and then madam webb's mom sees all of this like you know he's literally shooting people in front of her and, he sh and she's like she, she says quote unquote she says I don't understand, but she says it in like the most calm way. She's not like, I don't understand. She's like, I don't understand. <laughs> and, you know, right from that one scene, I could tell the acting was going to be Oscar worthy. <laughs> oh, man. Another thing I should just say is that I, I think I was the only one who kept on thinking this. I felt like the opening scene, it was like so, it was shot so out of focus. <laughs> and also there's like this weird, like handheld crash zoom for like every shot. There's like, it's, it's like cutting back and forth between Madame Webb's mom and Ezekiel Sims. <laughs> it's just cutting back and forth. Each like cut has like this handheld crash zoom. Every shot. It does that. And, and I'm like, it's like, what was like the, was I just, just why? Just like, I couldn't even think of any way. It was just like, why? And the thing is, they only do that for this one scene. They don't do that for the rest of the movie. <laughs> so the opening scene just feels like it's directed by a completely different person. <laughs> And might I tell you, this movie is directed by just one person. And the opening scene just feels completely different from the rest of the movie. And like I said, yeah, the lines are hilarious. I've, like, noted, like, some of the hilarious lines in the movie. Uh, first off, um, people have said this. Unfortunately, that um, very, very much memed line from the trailer about... Um, um, the Amazon forest and like studying the spider line that's not in the movie unfortunately which is a real shame I got so angry that's like that's kind of what makes me um subtract one point from this movie <laughs> that is like the one thing that makes me dislike the <laughs> I can't even say that seriously <laughs> um okay so here's a, here's like some of the funniest lines in the movie so Ezekiel Sims, um, he says this, he, he, like, I, I bet, I bet the writers thought this was like a badass line, <laughs> but it's such, it's such a non-badass line. It's a good thing. You didn't know this was the day you were going to die. Now he says it exactly the way I just said it in that monotone like ways. It's, it's <laughs> um, uh, there's also another line. Um, it was a, uh, it was like he was a spider person. <laughs> um. Uh, there's a doctor that tells Madame Webb to um, get some rest, watch old movies. <laughs> now, what's funny about this is that um, I mean, yeah, a doctor telling a patient to get some rest—that's pretty normal. But then a, the doctor is saying. Uh, watch old movies is so like out of out of nowhere and what's funny is that it immediately cuts to madam web watching an old movie <laughs> it was so funny oh oh yeah Th this line made me la laugh really hard by taking on this responsibility great powers will come <sighs> it's like that it's like that line uh, in the amazing spider-man about uh, where just where they just didn't say with great power comes great responsibility. Except this one is just like so so much worse. Um, there's also a guy on the train that asks Madame Webb, "Am I on the right train?" I'm. I, I, I 
do I really need to explain why that line doesn't even make any sense? You, this this like, random guy just asks a random woman if he's on the right train, like out of nowhere. Um, there's also a scene where um, she is reading her mother's, Madame Webb is reading her mother's notebook about like all her findings about spiders in Amazon forest. And this is all like exposition. And she's like saying it out loud. She's like, she's alone in her apartment, alone in her apartment. Just, just like reading all her mother's notes. And then she's like saying all of it out loud. It's like, yeah, it definitely sounds like uh, how a person would talk. And uh, another thing I remembered is that there's also a, um, a like a homeless cat that's like roaming around Madame Webb's apartment. Um, so Madame Webb, uh, you know what she calls the cat? A cat. She, she, the cat has no name. The writers couldn't like take fucking second to think of a name for a cat for a fucking cat <laughs> uh, what's a good name for a cat uh cat <laughs> um oh yeah there's this one line that was just like so mean-spirited so um adam scott is in this movie from parks and rec he plays ben parker in the movie um also known as uncle ben you know peter parker's uncle that gets um you know, shot and killed and all the Spider-Man stories. So yeah, uh, Adam Scott, he plays a younger Ben Parker and Madam Webb says to him, you ever been gunned down in Queens? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, it's so mean. <laughs> oh man. Um, uh, uh, man, there's like so many like weird, uh, there's, there's like so many um, plots in the movie that are just kind of abandoned. Um, so, first time we see uh, Ezekiel Sims um, hunting down the basically the whole plot revolves around how um, Madame Webb is like she has these uh, she can see the future or whatever or something, and then uh, Ezekiel Sims, the bad guy, uh, he has these like recurring dreams of like three spider women. Um, killing him so then he's like oh i gotta find these three girls and then kill them and then that's basically the 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 the, the plot <laughs> but the thing is the first time we see ezekiel sims in action hunting down uh these three girls and he's in all the the, the black suit and everything um uh he's seen crawling on the on the ceiling is it, a it, it scene that takes place in a subway and he's He's crawling on the ceiling and then the characters point out that, oh my God, he's on the ceiling. But then they're like, wait, why is no one reacting to it? So, and then after that, uh, they established the fact that, yeah, no one was able to see Ezekiel Sims uh, crawling on the ceiling and everything. So this leads me to believe that only like um, the spider people, I guess, or uh, only like a, like a, a chosen people can actually see Ezekiel Sims. And, um, that is only there for one scene. It's only there for that fucking subway scene. <laughs> it is never brought up ever again. There's a scene that takes place in a diner afterwards. Um, um, everyone sees Ezekiel Sims just fine. And another thing is, um, at the end of the movie, uh, toward uh, the, the climax um, Ezekiel Sims is like um, chasing after the girls uh, with Ben Parker there. Um, ben Parker um, and his sister also see Ezekiel Sims just fine. So uh, it's just like, oh, uh, you can't see Ezekiel Sims thing was like uh, completely fucking abandoned at one point. <laughs> um, another thing that was abandoned is that after that whole subway sequence, because yeah, they say that yeah, people couldn't see Ezekiel Sims. Um, Madame Webb becomes like a fugitive kind of where she's like being wanted for kidnapping the three girls. Um, that goes absolutely nowhere. She's able to travel free uh, anywhere. At one point she even like travels abroad, even though she's a fucking fugitive. <laughs> and it's like, it's never brought up ever again. It's never even resolved at the end of the movie. It's just like never brought up again. It's so fucking weird. Um, also, this movie apparently takes place in 2003. 
it's, it doesn't even feel like it feels like modern day New York. Now there's some like Beyonce references, like Beyonce posters and stuff. Um, another thing is that um, there's a NSA technology that uh, they used in the movie, which was so fucking unbelievable. I don't even think that te- type of technology has been even invented yet. And it's that when Ezekiel Sims, he's like, okay. I stole these NSA tech for for you to find. Um, you were able to perfectly map out the people that are killing me in my dream uh, as like still images, and then unmask them to reveal their perfect like face. It's like that type of technology definitely did not exist back in 2003. I don't think that technology exists now where you can have like how you, where you can like perfectly show like this mental dream image of a person. <laughs> it's so like it's, it didn't even feel like 2003. Why is this film taking place in 2003? It's so weird. Um Okay. Yeah, you know what? Let's talk about Madam Web as a character because, okay, first off, let's talk. We're gonna talk about Madam Web, but let's also talk about Dakota Johnson. Now, um, Dakota Johnson, I think, is a pretty good actor. I like her as, as a as a actor as well. Um, although from the interviews and stuff, um, I get this impression that she's like. Sometimes she's, I don't know if she's being sarcastic or not. She has this really dry way of saying stuff. (laughs) It sounds like she's joking, but also being serious. I don't know how to take it. I don't know if I should take it seriously. And uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. 30% battery. How long is that going to last? 18 minutes. Well, shit, I was going to turn this into a 10-hour video, but never mind. Okay, so. <laughs> so, like I said, with Dakota Johnson, I don't know if she's being serious or not half the time. And she kind of talks like that in this movie. <laughs> and you know what? After seeing this movie and after seeing her in interviews about this movie, my respect towards Dakota Johnson has, has rised so much. It's like... Apparently, after the first trailer drop, she, like, fired her talent agency. And, like, she's just, like, actively roasting the crap out of this movie. She's like, yeah, I haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> she knows the, she even knows this movie is crap. So, because of that, my respect towards Dakota Johnson has, like, skyrocketed. Um, but let's talk about Madam Web as a character because she's a paramedic. She's a paramedic, but, like, she hates people. And when these three girls are in danger, she's she immediately is like, uh, I'm gonna drop you after your parents' place. I don't want to deal with this shit. <laughs> and at one point, she's like, she's like, okay, girls, I'm gonna leave you in the woods. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. So like, I'm gonna be back in like a couple hours. So just like stay here in the woods, okay, in the middle of the woods where it's kind of dangerous as well. It's like, like dude, it's like you're a paramedic. Okay, if you don't want to help these girls, why are you a paramedic? It's like, aren't you par- like, isn't your fucking job to save lives? <laughs> it's, it sucks. Um, so let's talk about the spider women. Oh yeah. The spider women scenes that are on, on the, on the trailers. Yeah. By the way, uh, those are all dream sequences. They don't actually happen in the movie. There's only like two scenes of that and it's all a dream sequence. So, um, you know, if we're not gonna give us Spider Man, at least give us you know Spider Women. At least give us some like action with that, you know. Um, so Spider Women. Um, you can see that they're like different characters individually, but like th- the actors don't really have anything to do with them. So like you can tell that they're like, oh, is that she's like the smart one? She's like the rule breaker, and she's like the one that's just kind of there, but. Like, <laughs> But it's like with the performance, there's not not much convincing. It's just that so that it just feels kind of flat. And when it comes to the bad guy, Ezekiel Sims, um, he doesn't have any character development. He's just like apparently like I I don't know. I don't. Know, he wanted revenge for people or something or something. 
I don't know. It's like he, at one point he he said like, "Oh, you guys didn't help me when my family was starving," or something. And then that's all we get. And that was like the opening scene. It's like one dialogue. It's all we get for his character development. And it, and the rest is just him just being a like a bloodthirsty monster, just like wanted to kill these three girls. Oh, another thing. Uh, the actress that's playing this character is called Tahar Rahim. I'm I'm just gonna straight up say it. I think all of his dialogues are ADR. Um, sometimes. Uh, it's not just to Har Rahim. It's sometimes other actors, but mostly to Har Rahim. You don't see his mouth moving when he's speaking. Sometimes, this is a movie. This is a big Sony movie. It's eighty million dollars. How do you fuck that up? <laughs> it's such obvious ADR. It's like it's fucking unbelievable. Okay. We are finally reached the halfway through my notes. <laughs> Action just sucks. Um, there's like no physics or impact when people are getting punched, or like you can see in the trailer when like Ezekiel Sims is just like jumping around. There's like no physics to it. It's just kind of like bouncing up and down and everything. The editing sucks. So this goes for the action. It's so choppy and it's like, and it's like there's so much digital zooms and like pans. And like I don't think the director even obeyed the 180 degree rule, so it's it's so confusing. I don't even know where I am half the time during the action. And once you start doing that, then you know you've completely fucked up. It's also like it's it's also okay. I'm a I'm a college film student. Let me just say this movie looks like every like student film. It's Everything about this movie looks hideous. <laughs> it looks like a fucking amateur made it, but you know, it's SJ Clarkson, you know, this was her first feature film, you know, she does like like a lot of TV. There's also like a weird like low frame rate slow motion shot in the one on the Oh, oh also a lot of people pointed this out. Um I noticed it too. There's towards the end, they reuse a shot from Spider Man two. So anyways, <laughs> Let's move on to the sound design, which is absolutely horrendous because, like I said, um, a lot of the lines feel like ADR, and it's such an obvious ADR. It's like, with, with like the horror Rahim's lines, they're all like ADR and stuff. Um, another thing is that there's a sequence. Um, it's in the trailer with like the diner. So during that sequence, Toxic by Britney Spears, that song is playing, and... It was so, it was so jarring, <laughs> just to say the least. It was, um, they were playing that song over the fucking score of the movie, the composed music. <laughs> and also like, oh my the fact that they kept on using this, it's like fucking Ezekiel Sims is like uh, showing up in the diner and he's about to kill the three girls. It's supposed to be a very tense scene, but fucking Toxic is playing. So it's like it ruins, like it takes out like all of the tension out of the scene. It's fucking, it's, the scene is fucking, I kept on, I couldn't stop laughing during that scene. It was, it was ho absolutely hilarious. Um, uh, so yeah, those are all of like the 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 bad parts about this movie. <laughs> so now let's talk about the good parts about this movie. So now let's let's turn let's move over to my final thoughts about this movie. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll say one good thing about the movie. The new Sony logo looks pretty cool. I don't think it has anything to do with the movie. Anyways, my final thoughts is <laughs> my final thoughts is that um, I mean, <clears throat> compared to like some of the recent like bad movies I've seen like in, in recent years, like Jurassic World Dominion, The Exorcist, Believer, The Beekeeper, or the live action Little Mermaid or Amsterdam, those were bad movies, but they were like boring and like slog to sit through. Um, so was Morbius, by the way. Morbius was fucking boring to sit through. But Madam Web, on the other hand, now that's my kind of bad movie. I can sit through that. That shit was hilarious. 
And now, a lot of people are like comparing this movie to Morbius. And uh, people are saying, oh, yeah, Morbius was better. Morbius was like way better. I I'm going to be honest. I would rather watch Madam Web rather than Morbius. Morbius, you see, Morbius has a lot of meme potential. But Madam Web has like none. Which is, yeah. Which is kind of what made Morbius funny. But that's not, but it's like an outside thing for Morbius. So. Morbius in reality was like a really boring movie, just a boring and bad movie to sit through. Madam Web was just like a hilariously bad movie. So for me, I was more entertained by Madam Web. And um, uh, I gotta say, it's just like you know why, like you know why Venom worked, but Morbius and Madam Web didn't. Morbius, Venom worked because, not because it was just, you know, because it was a character from the Spider-Man comics. It was, Venom worked because it was a character from the Spider-Man comics that people knew about. No one knows who the fuck Morbius and Madam Web are. And also, you got the guys that wrote Morbius, so, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, Craven the Hunter is coming out. I don't know if a lot of people know who Kevin the Hunter is, so good on them. Um, what else? Am I, what else? What else do I gotta talk about? Oh yeah, I forgot. So unlike Morbius, uh, this movie doesn't doesn't have a post credit scene. Um, also has no tie-ins to the MCU, which on one hand is a detriment, and also on the other hand, it's also a really good thing. With Morbius, because the fact that it had an MCU connection. People would be like actually interested in it. Be like, oh, okay. I wonder what kind of connection it is. In the end, it was a, a horrible connection. It was. It was like it was just. What the fuck was that? And on the plus side, because the fact that Madam Web doesn't have any connections to the MCU, it's like they didn't tamper anything with the MCU. So you know, that's great. But at the same time, I was kind of disappointed they didn't have a post credit scene. Although, I'm pretty sure I know the reason why they didn't have a post credit scene for this movie. And it's because they obviously couldn't top that masterpiece of a post credit scene from Morbius. <laughs> Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. <sighs> you know, I, I can't believe it. I, I cannot believe that. Still to this day. The best 2024 release I've seen so far is Mean Girls. <laughs> uh, yeah, Madam Web was absolutely hilarious. Um, go watch Madam Web in theaters if you want. Um, you know what? You know, you're gonna say. Um, re remember when Morbius got re-released in theaters because of the memes, and no one saw it. I highly doubt that's gonna happen with Madam Web because it has less meme potential. But it. Let's say that it, it, if it gets released, re-released um, after flopping, I will, I, I am damn sure going to be there to see that movie when it gets re-released. I will so be there. This movie was fucking hilarious. Guys, go see this movie in theaters. I want Sony to release more of this crap, <laughs> more of these cringe so that I can just like, <laughs> I can just fucking laugh at them. It's fucking hilarious. Um. Yeah, go see Madam Web. Um, if you if you saw it, did you like it? If so, I, you're probably lying. Um, and you know what? I gotta say, I'm very excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs>